Will you pray with me this morning? God, we thank you for bringing each and every one of us to this place. And God, we ask that you truly open our hearts and our minds and our lives, that God, you let us worship you with everything we have, and that God, you fill us and remind us that you are our hope and our strength, yes, Lord. so that when we leave this place today, everyone will know that you're living in us and through us. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, you may be seated. Will you tell somebody around you they're in the right place today? morning scripture reading is from the book of Isaiah chapter 35. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like rose and autumn crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The excellence of Mount Carmel and the plain of Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty and splendor and excellence of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble and tottering knees. Say to those that are fearful and hasty heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with a vengeance and with the recompense of God. God will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a heart and the tongue of the dumb shall sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and the streams in the desert. And the burning sand and the mirage shall become a pool. And the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lay resting shall, shall the grass, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And the highway shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the holy way. The rude and rebellious shall not pass over it, but shall be for the redeemed, the wayfaring ones. Yes, the simple ones and the fools shall not err in it and lose their way. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk on it. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, and everlasting joy shall be on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Hear what the Spirit says today. I hope you're as glad as I am to be here today. I don't know about you, but it seems like the last couple of weeks we have just been bombarded with sad stuff. Am I right? And disappointing stuff. Maybe it's been in your own life or maybe it's been out there somewhere. Let me call your attention to some of the sadness that I've felt personally. And even though some of it didn't affect me directly, I felt the sadness and the weight of others that came with it. In the last couple of weeks, you know, one of the District courts did a ruling in Tennessee and Kentucky and a couple other states that said the state could actually discriminate against same-sex marriage. And that's the first time that that's happened. You know, we were kind of on a roll there for a while, and then there was this, oh, hold up. No, you can still discriminate. Our own Metro Council voted this past week. I was there. Oh, they voted on the ordinance for here to say no. Although, I will say though, there were four people that said yes. Amen. And that was a start. Four out of 12, that was at least a start. Yeah. It said no, we will not recognize GLBT people and give them equal rights in Baton Rouge. Over in our neighboring state, the National Guard's been called in to deal with refugees, refugees coming to the U.S. border. 
scares me. I'll just tell you it scares me. I feel the weight of that. No matter how you feel politically about that, it just scares me. Lord only knows what's going up in Ferguson. I do know this. I don't like shooting unarmed people. I don't like it when unarmed people end up dead. I just don't like that. Now, please don't get me wrong, because you know, we have a couple of police officers that attend our worship services, and, and they may be here today. And I am not anti-police, because you know, they know I call them. <laughs> I get in trouble, you know who I'm going to call, especially the two that I know personally. I'm going to call them and say, I need a little help here. And they give me advice all the time. So I'm not talking about all police. I'm just talking about in certain circumstances when things get out of hand and things happen that really shouldn't happen, in my personal opinion, and evidently it's a lot more people besides me that think that too. We've had celebrity deaths this week, and I, I, I've seen a lot about Robin Williams' And how it has affected, his death has affected so many people. Because you know, he makes us laugh. And we don't think about people making us laugh dying. We don't like it when they pass on. And yet we don't know what people are really, really, really going through underneath all the laughter. Underneath what we see when we come to worship. We don't know what people are going through. I learned that long ago when I was going through training, clergy training, that Whatever you get up there, I mean, I really feel the weight every week. What am I supposed to say, God? What is the message of the hour? What is it that people need? Because I, I can look at you and you could all sit there and just be smiling and happy and just about ready to go on to glory or you would think that glory would be a relief from whatever you've been facing. Amen? And I know it's not like that all the time, but sometimes it is. A little closer to home, you heard about Charles Hartley's mother passing this week, and Fran's brother passed a couple of weeks ago, and she's had a really difficult time with that. Keep her in prayer. Some of you have had relationships that are in trouble. Some of you have had relationships that are now over. Some of you, to some of you, it came as a surprise. To others, maybe you just weren't paying attention, or maybe you didn't see what you didn't want to see. And as uh, someone, someone said to me the other day, have you noticed it seems like a, there's, been a, there's been a whole big bucket full of crazy been poured out around here lately? Yeah, y'all got that? If there's crazy going on around you, well... You're in the right place this morning. Because I found myself this week carrying all of that stuff and carrying the weight of it and feeling my own loss and the reminders. You know, Robin Williams' death, was he, he, it was by suicide, and then it brought to mind other people that had passed by suicide and how people that I love and so dearly and held so dearly and could speak to one day and be fine, and the next day they're not here. I needed some relief, so I asked God for some relief. You know, I, I realized, and I kept saying to God, you know, I'm your child, hello, you know, here, this one. And I know I ask you for a whole lot because I'm constantly... If I'm on Facebook and you put out there, please remember so-and-so in prayer, or please remember me, you know what I do? I stop right then and say a prayer. Right then. Whatever I'm doing, I just stop. I figure if I've got time to read the next post, I've got time to pray for you. Right? So I stop. I don't mean necessarily that I pray for 30 minutes to two hours or whatever, but I stop and remember you in that moment and say, God, I don't know what all is surrounding that, but you do. Be with them and let them know that we're with them right now. Somebody's with them. Somebody's behind them right now. And I'm going to tell you, when you call out to God and say, I need your help, and you really, 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 really mean it, 
I don't mean you're just saying it to be saying something, but you mean it. And God knows you mean it. Help will come. Help will come. It started coming. Now here's the thing. Are we going to recognize it when it gets here? That's the thing. Or are we going to pay so much attention and keep drawing attention to all of the pain and all of the sorrow and all of the aggravation and all of the crazy and all of the drama and all of the trauma and all of that other stuff? Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, some of you are going to need some long-term help with that. I'm just telling you. I'm not saying God's going to come and zap it all away today. I'm not going to say that. I know God can do that. God can take away your illness. God can take away your pain. God can heal a relationship. God can do all sorts of things in a split second. But I also know that that's not always the way God works. In fact, that's not how God usually works. God usually lets us be grown-ups. Come on now. Not just babies. Be grown-ups about situations and say, hey, I need to go fix this as best I can. And if I can't fix it by myself, I'm going to reach out to you first, God, and then second of all, I'm going to reach out and find out who can help me. And if this person can't help me, I bet they can resource me. Because, you know, I can't fix everything as a pastor. I can't fix all of your troubles. I wish I could fix all of your spiritual needs. But I can't. I wish I could fix all of your relationship issues, but I can't. I just can't do it. I can pray with you. I can guide you. I can give you some encouraging word. I can remind you that happiness may not be here right now, but if you dig deep, you'll find that joy deep down inside. The joy that only comes from having a relationship with spirit, you know, whether that spirit is recognized as breath, Come on. Relationship to God. Relationship to one another. Look inside. It's there. So I started paying attention because I needed it. I said, God, I need some joy. I'm tired of all of this. I mean, I know I can have to deal with some of it when I get through praying and when I get through praising, but I'm going to ask you for some joy. And don't you know God started immediately? God just started giving me stuff right and left, and so I want to share some of that stuff with you. I had not one, not two, but three advisors that called me this week and said, when are you going to quit dealing with craziness? <laughs> How much, here, here was the better question that one came. How long and how much of your time are you going to devote to craziness that you cannot fix when many need you to be there to support and encourage and get behind the programming and make sure the church is moving forward? Hello? Y'all with me on this? Y'all mighty quiet this morning. I hope y'all aren't. I, somebody asked me about this bed. They said last night when I was up here, someone from one of the groups that was meeting here said, oh, I don't even want to ask why you're putting a bed up there. You're going to try to keep them awake or put them to sleep. <laughs> they don't need any help going to sleep around here, but you just better stay awake. We need some fire up in here. If you want joy, you must be holding something too. And then Miss Linda and I talked about having uh, this grief support, loss support. I want to make sure you understand it's not just if you've lost somebody it's not just about death, in other words. It's not just if you're dealing with... Now, some of you are dealing with the death of loved ones or even the death of Robin Williams or some other celebrity that has meant something to you. You're dealing with that loss. But it's not just about death. It's about any kind of loss. Some of you have loss of relationships. Some of you have loss of jobs. Some of you have lost sleep about this, that, or the other, and whatever that is. This is for you. So I hope that you will be there. The first one will be this Wednesday evening. If you work on Wednesday evenings, try to get here this Wednesday and try to let Miss Linda know after service because some of the, that, that doesn't mean any other time is not available because sometimes it is.
And then I read something from Nancy Wilson, the founder of our, I'm not founder, the uh, moderator of our denomination. And I don't know if you saw this or not. I posted it on Facebook, I think this morning or last night. But wow. I love it when our, our moderator gets fired up. And if you know Nancy, and we're going to try to get her here to preach for us sometime soon, but she, she's generally pretty level-headed, steady, calm. But I could tell as soon as I started reading this, she's fired up. Something has lit a fire under her, and I want to read more. Here's what she said this week. This was a letter sent out. It's an open letter to people of faith. This is not yet another letter of sympathy to a grieving family for the loss of their child. We do grieve with the family and community of Michael Brown. We hold our own children close and try to imagine his family's sorrow, yet cannot. But grieve we must, not only for this family, but also for ourselves because we are at risk of being the, uh, excuse me, the risk of losing the soul of our country. That's pretty powerful words to start with, is it not? Today I write a letter from the, jail from the jailhouse of race. Did you hear that? That's a powerful line. Today I write a letter from the jailhouse of race. This jail has no visible walls, but there are walls nonetheless. If we do not rise up against them and tear them down, we will remain trapped and afraid. Racism continues to plague our nation and communities. Instead of lynchings, we have prisons. Instead of segregated schools, we have the systematic dismemberment of public schools. Our prisons, schools, and public works are being signed, sealed, and delivered into the hands of for-profit carpetbaggers of the 21st century. Amen. While teachers, parents, and children are left with little or nothing if they are black, brown, or poor. Overwhelmingly, black and Hispanic students now have a price on their heads. Why? These students have been promised to the prison system because for-profit prisons and detention centers have contracts that guarantee filled beds. Even our churches are not immune. Come on now, hear, hear it. On August 8, 2014, we learned of the apparent cold-blooded murder of yet another black teenage boy who had been just graduated from high school. From all witnesses' accounts, a policeman provoked, attacked, and repeatedly shot Michael Brown as he tried to kneel down with his hands raised in surrender. Mike was unarmed. No letter of sympathy is enough because there are too many letters of sympathy to write. Michael Brown is just one among countless victims of racism. We must all, excuse me, we must all fail, fall to our knees and confess that we have not done enough to break down the walls of race. When we get up off our knees, here, here, here's the fire now. Here, if you didn't hear the rest, hear this. When we get up off our knees, we need to take time to read the Bible with new eyes. Woe to those who let widows and orphans starve. Woe to those who ignore the poor and needy. Woe to those who have power to change things, yet do nothing. People in religious authority and people of faith who could reach out but don't will gnash their teeth in the darkness of despair when one day they meet their maker and realize they could have loved and served their neighbors. But instead, they washed their hands and pretended they are colorblind with no power. The time for pretending has long passed. The time for confession and action is now. Racism and a police state targeting people of color are not just in Ferguson, Missouri, or just on the border where children and their mothers are being treated like criminal, cr criminals instead of asylum seekers from drug wars. As I watch the video of militarized police in SWAT teams and armored vehicles attacking citizens of Ferguson, Missouri with tear gas, rubber bullets, and incendiary devices, I remembered the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his letter from Birmingham jail. 
and hear Dr. King's words. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outside, outright rejection. Then Dr. Wilson continues, it is time for us to rise up, not in violence, but in creative nonviolent action which pulls back the curtain on the inherent violence of racism and race-based policing. We remember the words of Jesus and the words of almost every angel in the Bible who upset people's lives. Fear not. Hear that? Fear not. You can do this. Be creative. Today there are freedom schools springing up across this country. Be part of it. Today there are foster homes in our churches that are opening up to the children crossing the border. Learn Spanish. Put yourself on the path of change. Speak out. Say hello to someone who appears different from you. Start small, but think big. Organize. Start where you are. Work as a team. Just start. Build a new heaven and a new earth. Use the power in your hands to build a better world that is full of creativity, love, learning, and fullness of life for all our children. Build this world with open hands so that the world belongs to everyone. Grace and peace. Then I heard something else. I started hearing my former sermons about joy. And I almost had a Christmas service today. <laughs> or an Advent service. Started hearing all those old sermons I preach about joy and remembering that happiness can go away. Happiness is here for a moment and then it can go away. But the joy deep down inside stays with yeah. us. Yeah. And then I heard this particular scripture Isaiah 35 that Rhonda read to us. Now listen to it again with a fresh, <clears throat> fresh eyes, as Nancy said. And see if it's not where some of us have been. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. This is the desert. Rejoice in the desert, singing and joy and rejoicing in the desert. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellence of Mount Carmel and the plains of Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. They, not might see, they shall see the glory of our Lord. Amen. They shall see. I don't know about you, but that gave me a little joy. That put a little pep in my step when I read that. <laughs> Strengthen ye the weak hands and, the, and confirm the feeble knees. Well, there you have it. Think you can't do anything? Remember what Dr. Nancy just said. Start somewhere. Be creative. Start somewhere. Start with what you have. You feel too weak with your hands? Are your knees too feeble to hold you up? Guess what? Work in teams. Get somebody to hold you up. Say to them that are fearful of a fearful heart. Anybody got a fearful heart? Anybody know anybody with a fearful heart? Say to them, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come. Now, I'm stopping on purpose if, you, if you're following along. 
or if you remember what it said. It says, your God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense. God will come and save you. I, but listen, your, your God, this is what popped out on the page. Your God will come. I'm over there in the desert place. They're going to be there's blooming stuff in the desert place. And, and, and my God will show up. That's what it says. Your God will come. I don't care if God comes with vengeance or love or whatever how God wants to get here. I'm okay with that. Just come. Just show up. In fact, it says God will come and save you. Amen. That means there's a reprieve from all of this. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap up as a heart and the tongue of the dumb, dumb sing. And I thought, Lord, in fact, well, one of the TV stations, WBRZ, interviewed me after uh, that Metro Council meeting last week. And, and we came out, and, you know, it wasn't like the two weeks before when we came out. Remember the sermon I did after that where I just told you I felt beat up all week? Mm -hmm. Just really felt beat up. And two people came up to me after service. To, and, and mind you, it was two straight women. Two heterosexual women. I want you to get that because it's important to this lesson, to this point. And one of them was Dr. Linda, and I don't think she'll mind me saying it. And then Dee told me at lunch the same thing that you told me. She said, I almost got up. And you know, you're Pentecostal from way back. You can just interrupt me when it's really the Spirit. You know? when it's Y'all heard that, when it's really the Spirit. Don't just interrupt me for the sake of interrupting. <laughs> She said, I almost got up and said, but don't you see in my whole community people are talking about the way that Metro Council, uh, what happened at that meeting. They're talking about all of the crazy things people were saying and how horrible. And they didn't realize all of this was going on. They didn't realize all of that negativity was out there. They didn't realize the extreme that this had come to. And it, it, it exposed it for what it was. She said, so be encouraged. Don't just be beat up. Be encouraged that now the light has been shown on that. And now people know where to look to say, oh, I don't know about all of that over there. Boy, I'm going to tell you, you, I left here a very different person after you spoke to me, Miss Linda. You ministered to me. Thank you, Pastor Linda. <laughs> I'm serious. You were my pastor at that moment. And, I, and then I, when I came out from this last meeting and, and, and it had failed, you know, <clears throat> the guy that interviewed me, he, he said, well, aren't you heavy? Aren't you upset? I said, yeah, I'm sad about it. I really am. This is the stuff that went on the cutting room floor that you didn't get to see on the news. I said, yes, I am. I'm really upset about it. And he was like, you don't look upset. And I, I really wanted, you know, I was like, well, but it's been exposed, you see. It's been exposed. People are in the light now. We know where we stand. We know who, who is over there standing against us. We know the vileness and the vitriol that they have with it. I, I'm not talking about people that just have a disagreement because we're always going to have theological issues. I have theological disagreements with my own family members. But we get along. And we can sit down and have a meal together and everything's fine. I think that's why we come to communion, just so you're... That, that's the real reason I come to communion. It's because if you sit down with your enemies, Psalm 23, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You break bread with people, it puts us at the same common denominator. We got to eat. We just got to eat. And when we eat together, whether we're mad or whatever, it puts us down to the same common denominator. For me, that's what communion is about. That's what communion means to me. It's not about the cross and the blood and all of that. I, I know, and I don't, don't get upset if that's what it means to you. You don't have to let that mean that to you. I'm just telling you that that's what communion is for me. It's about us all being equal in the sight of God and in the sight of each other, that we are all important, that we are back to the very basic needs of sitting and having a meal together. I want to tell you the light was exposed. So I didn't leave the same way. I didn't feel all beat up that time. 
And, and he said, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, we're going to just keep working. We didn't get 12, but we got four. Yes. And a couple of them, my own representative, in fact, I couldn't make heads or tails of what she said. Part of what she said sounded like she was really for us, and part of it's like she was really against us, but when it got to the end of the vote, she voted no. I thought, well, I have to, you know, I have to talk to her. On top of that, she's African American, and I really wanted to take her back to her roots, but it's like some of the stuff she was saying was like, you know, a few years ago, the science, there were people saying this about you as a black person and you as a female. But okay, if you want to use that argument now. But I'll leave that for another day. <clears throat> Listen to the rest of this. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. In the wilderness, streams will not just show up, break out. For me, that says just burst forth. Just, just come up out of nowhere like springs. Just show up. Streams in the desert. And I, and I thought, well, you know, next week we're doing the immersion baptism. But when I read that, I saw baptism. I was like, because when you're going through the wilderness, that felt like water just washed right over me. As I was reading this, it felt, I could almost feel the water just washing, just rebaptizing me. Just making me feel like it's a new day. Just giving me a moment of relief. Just giving me a moment of joy in the midst of all that other stuff. Baptism. And the parched ground shall become a pool. And the thirsty land springs of water. Now you're talking about doing a 180. That's a turnaround. In the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass and reeds and rushes. And here, 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 here. And a highway shall be there. And a way. And I stopped right there and I felt the Holy Spirit said, there's a way. There's a way to get through this. There is a way in this wilderness. There is a way to get your joy. There is a way to turn things around to do the 180. There's a way. Go on down to the last verse. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy. Everlasting joy. Even when I'm not happy, everlasting joy. I just got to recognize this. Deep down in there, I got to find it. I may have to call Vicki and say, will you come walk by me? Because she will always smile. I don't know what in the world that girl takes every day. Besides a good dose of life. Because I've never seen her when she wasn't smiling. And I've seen her pretty, you know, I've seen her at Pride Fest meetings when we were busy, 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 and we could be all stressed out, and she would be. <laughs> and you don't know how much I draw from that everlasting joy that seems to be in her. It shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing might flee away. No, that's not right. Uh, Sorrow and sighing, we hope, will flee away. No, that's not what it says either. Sorrow and sighing shall, Amen. shall, shall, shall flee away. Oh, my goodness. And when I read that, I heard Whitney Houston sing. <laughs> I did. Joy, unspeakable joy. You're going to hear her sing in a few minutes. Because I went right then to YouTube and had to pull it back up. It's like, ooh, I got to hear that. And then it wasn't long before Reverend Lee Carlton, one of our uh, first ministers in MCC, has been ministering for over 40 years in MCC, has been a minister in MCC over 40 years. 
he posted something from the Detroit Mass Choir, and I said, "Woo, hallelujah. The storm is passing over. Oh, did you hear that? That's not it. <laughs> I thought he had already started the music. Go ahead, get the music ready. Because this is what I heard. It was a different music. That was joyful music, I hope. I hope that was not a sad sound. I hope that was a good sound. Love technology. <laughs> Sorrow and sighing shall flee away because we need a moment of reprieve. We need a moment of joy. After this service, some of you are still going to have some loss to deal with because life happens and going back out there. It's one thing for us to come together and all of this energy and spirit be in this place. It's another thing to go out there by yourself and try to live. That's one of the reasons Dr. Linda will be here Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Help us get through some of that. Work through some of that. Some of us may need a couple of lessons. Some of us may need several weeks of support. Some of us may have to start paying her and go to her privately <laughs> for long-term help. But I'm going to tell you what, that's okay. You know why? Because she's spirit-filled. She's sensitive and discerning to what spirit says, not just what she thinks. But she's also very learned in her craft, in her education, and she knows. And she's also just wonderful. She's just wonderful. And how can you mess with that? So here's what I want to say today. If you've been carrying all that heavy load and you've been walking around in the wilderness and you've felt the weight of all of that, and some of you told me that even this morning on the way in. Some of you sitting here told me that this morning. And I was like, oh no, just hang on. I hope you'll make it through service because I want to share with you what God gave me. I want you to have joy even if it's just for the moment. The everlasting joy that will be there forever. But I want you to find the happiness and the relief and all of that right now. Amen. In Amen. this place. Amen. So that's why I'm going to share with you the song that Reverend Lee sent to all of us. The storm is almost over. It'll bless you. I'm going to just tell you. And if you, if you, whether you came from Pentecost or not, your Pentecostal roots may show. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Play it, brother. A while ago, um, Robert reminded me of one of the things that we always say about why we're here, because we say, come as you are. Now, he had a little picture that was a joke where apparently Mark wouldn't let him leave home this morning in his ten tennis shoes and boxer shorts because he said he couldn't quite come as you are that much. But, you know, but really it is the truth. The, you know, the, the, the only way you're going to find joy is to come as you are. Can't come as somebody else. Can't pretend to be somebody else. You also have to come as you are and realize that everybody else gets to come as they are. That means you don't, you know, you, you don't always have to agree with the pastor. You don't always have to agree with our moderator. You don't have to always agree with the person next to you. What you have to agree to do is to come as you are and let them come as they are and then realize that, you know, when we all come together like that, we learn from one another. And great things happen because that's the way God teaches us to do things. So, you know, that's a pretty hard lesson for me since I think that I know it all. The rest of you should just do what I say, you know. But, but that, that I, I realized a long time ago, though, that's what's been the rewarding part about being an MCC, you know. And that's why I, I write a check to this church every month. Not because I like everything that always goes on. Not because I've won the Powerball yet. Not because of any of those things. But because I realize all the things that I've learned over the past almost 30 years of being involved in MCC, that I've learned those from other people. And I've learned those from people that I didn't agree with when I first heard their viewpoint. You know, and some of them I still don't agree with their viewpoint. But when they listen to me and I listen to theirs, you know, we move forward. And that's the good part about everything. You know, we, we, some of us, you don't have to be a Democrat. You don't have to be a Republican. You don't have to be a liberal. You don't have to be a conservative. You probably need to be a hybrid of a whole lot of those things oh, yeah. yes. to do yes. things. Yes. 
but that's what's great about this church because we truly believe that you can come as you are. Yes. Unlike some churches that are still out there where you can come as long as you do what we think. You know, and that's why I think it's important to support MCC, and I hope that that's why you feel it's important to support MCC with your time and your talent and your tithes. So will you pray with me now? God, we just thank you for this opportunity to give back to you part of the blessings that you've given to us. And God, we ask as always that you open our hearts and open our minds and let us see the possibilities out there, God, on how we can best serve you and how we can help to create your mission in this world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, it comes time for us to come to the table. I've already explained one way of communion, so I'm not going to go into all the details again. It is a time for us to come together, though, a time for us to sit together in a meal, a time for us to remember we can remember the night that Jesus was to be betrayed when he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to everyone in the room. Everyone shared in that meal. And he said, this is the bread of life that is broken for all of you. And he took the cup and blessed it and passed it to everyone in the room. To everyone in the room. And said, this is the cup of everlasting joy for all of you. For those of you new with us, we serve an open communion here at MCC. That means you don't have to be a member of this church or any other church to come to the table of God. It's what I said while ago in my sermon. It's that place that makes us all even. It's a time that we commune together and commune with God. So know that you are welcome at this table. What happens is very simple. We take the bread, dip it in the non-fermented grape juice, either place it on your tongue or if you cup your hands, we will put it in your hands and you may serve yourself. There will also be prayer partners on either side if you have a special request you would like them to pray with you about. And also today you will notice something a little different. You notice that there is water, water here in the middle. Remember my sermon a while ago, I said that those streams in the desert, that relief was coming. And while we're doing an immersion baptism on Saturday, you know, we don't believe there's one way to baptize around here. We can baptize all sorts of ways. And you may have been already baptized. You may have been baptized more than once. And that's okay. But I'm going to come and stand down, and a couple of other folks are coming up, Linda and... and um, Vince are coming up to serve communion to you on either side. But if you want to have a stream in your desert, if you feel the need to come up and be rebaptized, that's all I'll do is take the holy water and dip it and dip my finger in it and play. I'm not going to pour it on your head, don't worry. Hairstyles I get are real important. <laughs> At least I hear that. <laughs> But maybe today you, will, you want an outward symbol of that joy being restored or that joy that was already there being ignited again, that fire inside of you coming back to life. So before, or after, during communion, you can come and have that moment with God and have your own sort of baptism. Would the acolytes and servers please come forward? All we ask is that you come as the ushers direct you. Just before we pray the benediction, I hope that you can go out with joy. I don't know about you, but I feel like dancing all of a sudden. Woo, that'll do it, won't it? Amen. For those of you who are staying for the membership class um, uh, at this afternoon, uh, there is a light lunch. Thank you, Danny, for putting it together for us earlier. Um, so there is a little light lunch for you prepared that will be set up in the front conference room. And everybody else is going to El Rancho. So if you would like Mexican food, go out to, with the church folks to El Rancho on Florida Boulevard and have a good time of food and fun and fellowship this afternoon. The rest of us are going to stay here for membership class. And we hope that, and remember what Tom said. You don't, this does not 
mean you have to become a member of the church. It just gives you the information to make an educated and prayerful decision. Okay? All right, let's say a word of prayer. God, I pray that whatever our weights have been, whatever sadness, whatever loss, whatever aggravation, whatever craziness, drama, and trauma that have come into our lives over the last few weeks, that today we can say, oh, yeah, I got joy deep down in my soul. I got joy in there, and I just haven't stirred that joy up lately. And God, thank you for the many ways that you come to us and speak to us. The way spirit will just come to us in the smile of a stranger, in a song, in a word. God, we thank you for all the ways you speak to us and minister to us. And now we ask you to bless us as we go out of this place with joy today. Wherever we end up eating today, we ask you to bless the food to the nourishments of our bodies and our bodies to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Shake hands and be friendly.